Hello, friends. Welcome to the Crank and Boom podcast. I am your host, Tao Green. I opened a Thai restaurant with my family 17 years ago that has since morphed into a multi million dollar ice cream business. I have the honor of leading 40 plus teammates to fulfill our company's mission create joy, ignite laughter, and inspire compassion. And now I get to share my experiences of building this incredible business with you. On the show, we chat all things small business, family, and life, and how we can do it all with a bit more purpose and in community. I am so glad that you're here. This is the Crank and Boom Podcast. Social media has become so much a part of the fabric of our daily lives. And though we may enjoy looking at our friends and family's timelines for photos of babies, dogs, and food, all the food, Learning how to navigate social media for your business is a whole different beast to tame. It's no longer the idea of if you build it, they will come. It's become really competitive, but if you're willing to invest some time and effort into it on behalf of your business, it can yield life-changing results. There's no foolproof way to win at social media, but I'm going to give you some tips on how to keep your social media game strong and how you can learn to build an online community that reflects success in your real life community. So let's get into it. So a hundred years ago, when there were not 500 social media platforms, I was in our restaurant, Thai Orchid Cafe, probably in the late 2000s. And Facebook was really the only social media platform that was around that was something that I felt like you could use for business. So that was the only platform that we were on. I would post our specials and I would post different pictures of food. Every once in a while, I would post a picture of myself cooking something, or this was even before we could really do video. And this was before I had a smartphone. I had a manual camera that I would use to take some photos and do the whole rigmarole of loading them on my computer and then loading them up to Facebook. Before, when you were on social media, you pretty much got to all of your followers. If you had 200 followers, Almost everyone would see everything you posted and they would like or comment. And one of the really pivotal things that came from social media that really, I would say, launched Crank and Boom as a business was when I would post about our restaurant and different specials, whether it be garlic and greens or maple bacon. There would be a good amount of likes and people would say, oh, yummy, that looks good. And you would definitely see people who would come in the store and say, well, I saw your picture of your bacon pad thai, and now I needed to have some. So you could definitely see the effects of what people would see on social and how it would translate to traffic and sales. But when I started posting about ice cream, I would say, we've got this coconut ice cream for dessert. Hope you'll come and try it. And I would do other flavors. Hey, we've got this amazing sweet potato pie ice cream from Elmwood Stock Farm. I can't wait for you to try it. And I would see more and more people start to like and engage and comment on those ice cream posts than I did the Thai food posts. And it was very stark. It would be 10 likes on a special on Thai food. And then it would go into the 100, 200 likes, which is massive at the time for an ice cream post. And I kept seeing that over and over again, having it translate from social to real life made me see the power and the effects of social media and being able to say, well, oh, this is how I reach people because we didn't have any money for paid ads. We couldn't put ads in mailers. We couldn't create mailers. We couldn't get into magazines. So it was really neat to start building that ice cream community just from our Facebook posts. That was really the start of how we created our online community and how we built that along with building our real life community as well. One of the lessons I've learned as an entrepreneur is celebrating. Taking time to intentionally honor your achievements and share them with others is a big part of what makes the whole journey worth it. And one of my favorite ways to do it is with food, of course. Gold Belly is our partner in how we deliver our ice cream to customers all over the U.S. so they can make their special moments even more special wherever they are. And whatever milestone you're celebrating with your friends and family, Gold Belly has just the thing. 
Whether you need Guy Fieri's trash can dessert nachos for dad's birthday or Martha Stewart's famous banana pudding for your sister's baby shower, Gold Belly can ship it right to your door and make your event even more special. So if you haven't taken advantage of Gold Belly's amazing offerings, now's the time. Run over to their website at goldbelly.com and make your celebration unforgettable. Hey friends, Tao here, popping in to share my excitement about one of my favorite companies in the whole world, Holly Hill & Co. If you are like me and are obsessed with food, especially local food, you will appreciate those special ties that happen around the table. Holly Hill & Co. believes, like I do, that food creates connection and community unlike anything else. That's why they take care to strengthen the ties across the generations between family, the farmer, and the land, all the way to the food that ends up on your table. You can experience exactly what this means at one of Holly Hill's nine unique Central Kentucky restaurants and through their beautiful emails. If you're in Kentucky, be sure to find the nearest location and get ready for an amazing experience with the most fantastic food. Holly Hill's co-founder is none other than my dear friend, James Beard-nominated chef Weta Michael, who's been a force on the Kentucky food scene for over 20 years. Learn more about their incredible food community by visiting hollyhillandco.com, where you'll find stories, recipes, how-tos, and even curated gifts. Again, that's hollyhillandco.com, and let them know that Tao from Crank and Boom sent you. When we just had Facebook with Ty Orchid, the goal of having that social media was very simple. It's to build awareness. Here's what's going on this week. And then hopefully to convert that awareness into actual movement and traffic into our store. So now, you know, 10, 12, 15 years later, when we have lots of platforms and are doing a whole lot of things, trying to stay focused on those goals and keeping them simple, even though our social media strategy and everything we do is so much more complicated. So all the different social media platforms can get overwhelming really, really fast. Do I need to go on TikTok? Do I need to join X, which used to be Twitter? What the heck is Discord? How do I engage in all these email lists and it's so overwhelming and every day a new thing pops up and it makes you think oh my god do I need to learn a whole nother platform and how do I figure it out so we're gonna dial it back a little bit everyone take a deep breath deep breath right now deep breath okay here are a few steps that I feel like if you are starting out in social media or you are in it and you don't know what to do and you feel like you are floundering, here's a way to kind of step back and refocus and help you get on your way. Number one, I would say choose one platform. You should choose the one that you can show up in consistently. So if you are funny and have a lot of quick little snippets, like go on Twitter all day long. If you are a more visual person and you do photos, you do videos, I would 100% do Instagram. And with Instagram, you can cross post with Facebook. So you get two for one. Instead of trying to figure out if I have to do all of them, just start with one. Number two, figure out a way to show up consistently. I think that is the biggest thing because if you show up one day and then 2.5 weeks later you show up, it's not going to help really build your audience and it's not going to make the algorithm very happy and they're going to think that you're inconsistent. Here are some tips on how you try to show up consistently. Many platforms will actually help you plan your social media. If you go to Canva, there is a planning tool We have used Sprout Social. That's a little more of a pricey tool. You can also use Later with Instagram and Facebook. There's actually now a planning tool within the platform that is free. Now, it's not the most smooth and doesn't have the most bells and whistles. But if you are just getting started, it is easy enough to upload one photo, upload a short caption, and just hit schedule. And that's all you have to do. Number three, enjoy the process. If you absolutely hate social media and you don't spend any time there, then 
maybe figure out a way to outsource it. Maybe you don't have a lot of money right now. The first time I outsourced our social media, one of our 16-year-olds that worked for us, I just said to him, I just need you to post whatever, no direction or anything. Find a picture of something, put a caption on it, make sure it's family friendly and appropriate, and then post it once a day. And that's all I did. And it was fantastic. If you want to be successful on social media, get used to telling your story over and over and over again, because not everyone is going to see every post. So if you have a way to tell your story that is woven in to other posts, that is going to be magic because that's how people get to know you. A lot of people don't want to show up on social media or think it's weird and that it's very self-promoting. I want to kind of twist that around a little bit and have you think of it from a different perspective and think about it as this is you sharing your message, especially if you have a new business. You got in this business for a reason. Maybe it is to make money and retire. Yes, that is fantastic. But there's probably another reason why you want to do it. Maybe you want to open a pet store. Maybe you want to open a restaurant. Maybe you want to be a life coach. Usually there is some other driving force as to why you're wanting to start that business. And if you can take that same purpose and translate it into social media, just think about how many more people you can reach. You have to be authentic. You have to be real with who you are. You cannot show up in a different way online than you do in real life. People are smart and people can suss out when something is not real. Not that you have to share all your secrets on social media. I actually would not recommend that. But I think there are things that we can share. For example, if we're talking about this podcast, I am very happy to share all the different business struggles that we've had. We have had all sorts of struggles. And my whole goal for doing this podcast is to make entrepreneurs feel less alone and basically be what I wish I had when I was starting out as an entrepreneur because it is a very lonely journey. So if me being able to tell someone else that it is hard and that some things on this journey will suck real bad, and if that makes someone else feel better, this one very unique person that has been put on this earth for a reason. And other people need you. They need your voice. They need your, your uniqueness. They need what message it is that you have to say. Let's turn that around and think about what could happen if your message was amplified to the world. Because what a difference that you could make. Thank you so much for listening to the Crank and Boom podcast. If you want business advice and tactics like this every week, click that follow button wherever you listen to your podcast so you never miss an episode with us. Also, if you like what you heard today, it would mean oh so very much to me if you would leave us a review that helps other people find us. Leave a note on what topics you want me to cover more of because we would love to hear from you. I can't wait to meet you here again very soon. Until next time, peace. This is a production of Four Eyes Media.